When is the best time for you to take your required minimum distributions? We know that at age 72, the IRS is going to force us to start taking money from our tax deferred accounts. They're gonna force us on an annual basis. And so we know these are going to be a continual thing. What is the best time to take your RMD in any given year? There are gonna be a few factors that you need to consider, and we're gonna discuss those factors in today's video. Let's get into it. The first thing that's important to understand about required minimum distributions is that it will always be based off the same formula. The only thing that will trade out of this formula is certain variables. And so every year your RMD for that given year is going to be based off the ending balance of that tax deferred account on December 31st of last year. You're gonna then divide by something called a life expectancy factor. You'll have to look up your RMD table specific to your situation. For most people, that's gonna be the uniform RMD table. And you're gonna to have to find your life expectancy factor based on the age you are turning that given year. So let's say that last year on December 31st, your IRA balance was $1,345,000. And let's say you were turning 74 that following year. And so you'd go to the uniform table and you'd find that your life expectancy factor is 25.5. And so you would divide that IRA balance by that life expectancy factor. You would find that your RMD in this specific situation is about $52,745. Now this will not change. It doesn't matter if you take your RMD in January or if you take your RMD in December or at some point throughout the year. We know our RMD based off last year's ending value. Now, this can create a potential problem because if we wait to take our RMD, let's say we don't take it right away in January, we could enter a problem that we call the falling market problem. Because again, your RMD is going to be based off of last year's ending balance, but as we enter into this year, we don't know what investments are exactly going to do. As we get into 2022, we see that both bonds are down as well as stocks are down year to date so far. So if we're investing in a classic 60-40 portfolio, that $1,345,000 IRA we had at the end of last year might be down below $1.2 million right now. And so if we recalculated our RMD based off this amount, our RMD would be updated to about $46,000. But that doesn't matter. We can't recalculate our RMD just because our investments are down. We have to take that $52,745 RMD. So now when we take that given RMD, we're taking when the market is at a decline. And this can be a problem for some retirees and can create a situation that is difficult to navigate. So what can we do about this? And does this mean that we should immediately take our RMD right at the beginning of the year to try to avoid this problem altogether? Well, again, it will depend on a few different factors and we'll get to those factors here in a second. But before we get to those factors, there's an overarching idea that we need to be thinking about as we talk through the timing of your RMD. On the screen, I have a chart that shows rolling 10 year windows of being invested in given asset classes and taking your given RMD. And basically what we're looking at here is whether you take your RMD at the beginning of the year or at the end of the year. Now we're using a million dollar starting portfolio and we're looking at the first 10 years that somebody would take their given RMD. And so again, we're looking at rolling periods from 1987 until now in each of these given asset classes. And then we're just averaging those 10 year rolling periods to find whether you have more money within your IRA if you take your RMD at the beginning of the year versus if you take that RMD at the end of the year. And if we look at the major asset classes of stocks, bonds, and then a classic 60-40 portfolio, we see that taking your RMD at the end of the year tends to lead to a larger average balance through that 10 year period. And if we think about it, this really isn't surprising. In most years, seven or eight out of 10 years, historically, we've expected investments to grow. And so based on this, on average, if we're taking our RMD at the beginning of the year, we're essentially stopping this compounding machine. We're taking from our IRA balance, and so less is left within our IRA to start to compound and grow into the future. Versus if we take our RMD at the end of the year, we see that the growth within that IRA happens throughout the year. And then at the end of the year, we're taking that given RMD. And so we generally expect a larger balance in our IRAs on an ongoing basis if we take our RMD at the end of the year. Now, this does not mean you should take your RMD at the end of the year. For instance, are you going to be taking that RMD and using it for normal retirement income? Or is that an excess RMD, meaning that you don't need that money and you're simply going to be putting it in something like a taxable account and reinvesting that for the future? Your answer to that given question can drastically change your RMD timing strategy. Because think about it, if we don't need our required minimum distribution, our goal should be then to minimize RMDs moving forward into the future because they are a tax problem for our situation. So we likely don't wanna take that RMD at the end of the year because that will mean our IRA balance grew that much larger throughout the year. And now moving into next year, we have that much larger of an RMD. 
In that situation, we'd rather take that RMD a little bit earlier in the year and have that growth happen within a taxable account. In addition to this, keep in mind that there are essentially three things that we can do with a required minimum distribution. We can simply take that as income, we pay the given taxes, and then start spending that as part of our retirement income. That's pretty self-explanatory. Number two is one that I find that a lot of retirees forget about. And this is typically in the case when we don't need that RMD. Oftentimes I see a retiree take an excess RMD, trade it into cash, take the distribution, pay the given taxes, and then reinvest that back within their taxable account. Know though that you can do something called an in-kind transfer. So you can take your RMD, you can take the shares of that given RMD, and you can simply transfer that right to your brokerage account without having it trade to cash. This type of in-kind transfer allows you to stay invested throughout the process so that if there's some growth during that time that we're trying to transfer into that taxable account, you receive all of that growth because you're transferring those shares in kind. Number three is something called a qualified charitable distribution, a QCD. And so if you're charitable minded, the best gifting strategy is taking a RMD and simply gifting that to a 501c3. Now, a QCD is an above the line deduction, meaning that we don't need to itemize our deductions in order to take advantage. And we're basically taking that RMD and immediately giving that to that given charity, eliminating it from our taxable income. Let's first talk about the simplest and generally most optimal time to take your RMD. If we're in a situation where we have excess RMDs and we want to mitigate our future RMDs. So again, going back to that chart that we showed a little bit earlier between taking your RMD at the beginning of the year versus the end of the year, if we take at the beginning of the year, on average, it leads to lower IRA balances moving forward in the future. This is exactly what we want with an excess RMD. You can apply the same idea to a QCD as well. Regardless of what happens in our tax situation, we know that we have to take that RMD throughout this year. There's not gonna be any exemption that we gain from that RMD. And if there is somehow a weird exemption like the 2020 CARES Act allowed for an RMD exemption, if you were somebody that took your RMD at the beginning of the year, the CARES Act also allowed you to recontribute that back to your IRA. And so the simplest strategy, and generally in most years will be the most optimal strategy, is taking at the beginning of the year. But what scenarios does this start becoming non-optimal? And there's a few that I can think of. The first one is if we're in a market downturn. So a year like we're seeing right now in 2022, we're at a market decline. And if we would have waited to take our RMD at some point during the middle of the year, well, now we're taking that large RMD and we're taking it from an IRA that is in a downturn. And so by doing that, we're minimizing our IRA balance that much more because we're withdrawing when we're in a downturn. Now, when we transition that excess RMD to our taxable account and we experience that recovery, that recovery will happen in that taxable account that doesn't have RMDs. And so if you are a frequent watcher of the Safeguard channel, you know that we talk quite a bit about Roth conversions and leaving a portion of your Roth conversion for a market downturn. Well, you can make the case that the same logic applies here with RMDs. If we do a portion of that RMD at the beginning of the year, and then we leave the other portion of that RMD at some point throughout the year when the market is at a decline, that can generally lead to more optimal RMD mitigation on an ongoing basis. That being said, however, it does create a little bit more work, but nonetheless, the same type of ideas that we apply to Roth conversions and RMD mitigation apply here as well to RMD timing. The second place it might make sense to wait is if you're not sure if you might have some surprise income throughout the year. So let's say that you're retired, you're on Medicare. And so we need to be thinking about things like IRMA because if we show too much income, we may be pushed above IRMA and that can lead to a Medicare Part B and Part D increase. And so if we have a fairly large taxable account and we have that invested in mutual funds that may spit out capital gains at the end of the year, that might push us with our excess RMD up and above a given IRMA target, thus leading to higher taxes. And so somebody that is charitably minded may want to wait a little bit longer in order to decide what they're going to do with that RMD. If they end up not having large capital gains, they can take their given excess RMD, invest that in their taxable account as they would in any normal year. But if they find that they have very large capital gains like they might have had in 2021, they now have the option to QCD a portion of that RMD, eliminate that and stay below that given IRMA bracket. And so this can be a wise strategy to wait a little bit if you're not sure what your tax situation is ultimately going to look like. But what happens if we're not in an RMD mitigation situation? What happens if our RMD fits right into our normal spending? Well, then the optimal timing strategy does adjust. Now, again, keep in mind that chart that we showed before, where we showed that the longer that you wait to take your RMD, the larger IRA balance you tend to grow over time. And if our RMD fits right into our normal spending, 
It likely means it's not a huge tax burden. And it likely means that we are allowed to grow our IRA balance a little bit more throughout time because again, it's not a tax burden on our situation. So given this, let's say you're in that given situation. Well, now rather than taking everything at the beginning of the year, our best strategy is going to be taking equal distributions or our normal distributions to fill our income equally throughout the year. Now, it's important to keep in mind that a lot of people think that RMDs all have to be taken at once. That's not the case. You can break up and take your RMD throughout the year through multiple distributions. It doesn't have to be a one-time distribution. A very important thing to note here if you're taking equal distributions is make sure that you have a balance of safety as well as growth within this given account. Because if we find ourselves in a given market downturn like we find ourselves right now, we generally want to switch our distribution from taking from safer assets to allow for some of that growth to recover. We wanna make sure that we have that balance so we have that control over where we take that distribution from. This being said though, you also have to keep in mind RMD aggregation rules. So let's say that you have a 401k, a 403b, and an IRA. You can't take an RMD all from one account. RMD aggregation rules mean that you have to split RMDs amongst accounts, meaning you have to take the given pro rata RMD from your 401k, your 403b, and your IRA. Now, in a future video, we're gonna go one step further and get a bit more granular with this discussion, talking about not only the best time to take that RMD, but also within that IRA account, which asset class should we be pulling that RMD from, whether we are in an up market, a down market, or a sideways market. Make sure you're subscribed to see that video. But as we mentioned earlier, RMD aggregation is an extremely important concept that every retiree ultimately needs to understand. You can't aggregate all of your tax deferred accounts together and simply take one RMD. If you do this, you may be subject to a 50% penalty in the amount that you mistook. We have a video right here explaining this concept a little bit further. Understand that if you have multiple tax deferred accounts, you need to take a pro rata RMD from each of those given accounts. Now there are certain accounts that we can aggregate together, but to learn more, click this video right here. Always remember you don't need more money, you need a better plan. Thanks for watching.